Mix Country 106, the Bar Talk Happy Hour. Odie County with you guys today. Oh, it's been a it's the last weekend of March. It's the 23rd. And uh boy, do we have a special treat for you guys to wrap up the month. You guys may remember him from last year. Another repeat guest now on the Bar Talk Happy Hour. We have, as you can see behind me on the screen. We have Jack Nelson on our line, and uh, he is up in the mountains on a what I'm sure is an amazing ski trip. And uh, Jack, what uh, can you uh, tell me? What's going on with you, bud? Hey, Odie, I'm reporting live from Echo Mountain here. As you can see, we're uh, reporting on Winter Storm 24, the spring edition that's rolling in behind me, very nicely up here. <laughs> but no, I'm having a great time, man. We are. Uh, we're having a blast celebrating the uh, radio release of Fog right now. I brought my son up uh, to get some of that extra cold weather that I sing about in the song and teach him how to ski for his first trip. So uh, I was excited to get that started today. And we're going to be plowing down this. Uh, this is the closest ski resort to Denver that I could find. It's, it's a pretty cool spot. So uh, looking forward to teaching him the ropes on on some skis. I've been snowboarding for the last 20 years, so uh, it'll be fun for me to get those boots strapped back on too so that'll be be a good time happy to be here man thanks for having me out yeah absolutely it was um cool and i'm, I'm glad that even musicians who are working their butt off can find some time to go and relax and especially have time with their family and their kids and and all of that and uh you know i was just listening to your album going places and i know you got the new single called fog um and uh but i guess we'll we'll touch on the on the hot topic right now which would be of course that that single called fog why don't you talk about that and uh what the uh i guess what 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 do you want people to know when they listen to that song is there a particular message is there something special what's going to stand out for people about that song well really the song is about resilience um and you know the the struggles that are that i sing about in that song in and of itself in uh <laughs> And we wrote it in 2017. We we took the band on a winter tour, our first ever winter tour up through the Rocky Mountains. We started at Music Fest over in Spring Boat Springs. It's probably right over that hill behind me a couple hours. And then uh, we, we kicked off from there. We headed up north all the way through uh, Montana, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, jackknifed our, our rig there. We... Uh, uh, through going through the east side of Montana up to North Dakota, we ended up uh, having to wait out a negative sixty degree blizzard. And apparently, it was like one of the worst winters they'd had in a couple of decades, I suppose. So, um, we uh, we learned uh, the tough way that a couple of boys from Texas didn't belong in that Yankee white stuff. And to uh, add insult to injury to that, uh, one of our our ladies back home uh, let us know that she would no longer be waiting for us back home. So uh, it got a little oh. extra cold to add to the frigidity. So uh, I was sitting in a sitting backstage at the Beacon Club in Casper, Wyoming, and getting ready to do our last show before we could finally come home. And I knew I just had to write it down somehow. And this. Uh, western country grass tune came out it, it is fog and we've been playing it live for years and to be able to finally be able to put it out on a record and put it out to radio and have it recorded is just a it's it's a great thing you know such a such a blessing now real quick producer raven i got to put you on camera for just a second do you take any offense to what he said about that yankee weather because i know even though i'm a southern boy i was born in oklahoma and uh, raised half my life, you know, down south in Memphis, Tennessee. You've been up here in Iowa all your life. Do, 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 do you do you need to teach him anything about what uh, real uh, quote unquote Yankee weather is? I can handle the weather. I know, right? It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, we know how to it, it, it was a it was a heck of an introduction for us. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, awesome. So now, Jack, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you real quick is. Uh, You've got it. You were talking about doing shows and everything. You've got a really unique style to your shows. Um, you're much. You've got a really lively, entertaining personality. Uh, is that something that just comes comes naturally to you, or when people come to your show, you know what 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 do they what should they expect first of all, and then number two, the guy they see on stage, you know, the entertainer. Is that you in real life, or do or do you find yourself being much more chilled? 
So usually, yeah, when I'm kind of just chilling at the house, I am very much chill. But when I'm excited about something, you get the full brunt of my excitement. See, I was the kid that never shut up. It was Everything was so exciting and new and, you know, just wanted to see and do everything. And then once I finally got to the point in my life where I've seen and I've done a lot, um, it's i finally gotten to the point where i can cruise a little bit more on idle but I'm, i don't think that excitement on stage or the fact of being on stage and being able to perform especially with a band it will ever go away like and what you, what you see is how i really feel and what i really want to put out there as far as music goes so i, I wanted to ask you too about uh you know the album going places um you of course the the title track on there going places i thought it was really cool because i felt like that was one of the most raw real emotions that we'll ever get to see from uh from you jack and you know i, I love the the line about saying you know we love i'm gonna probably paraphrase it here just a little bit because i lost my note in front of me but you said you know we love you jack but then you talk about the pay you know doing you know this this gig work uh just you know, it, it ought to be basically a crime, right? That of what they're paying, but then they say they love you. And then you talk too about, you know, the, the emptiness, you said you might as well be the radio. Uh, we, can you talk about that song real quick? Cause that song kind of struck a nerve, I think for me too. Um, and, and I guess where that song came from for you and, and what made you want to write it all out like that? So we were we were packing up to do a summer tour up through the mountains like we do we call it the Rocky Mountain Run that we do every summer and uh, I was halfway through my backpack and it just hit me like a lightning bolt like oh got to write a song so I sat down and it just it just came out as honestly as it possibly could have and just poured out onto the page every line just it together like a puzzle piece as it came along it was a uh, not my doing it was definitely a, a divine godsend if you will mm -hmm. um but it is it's all purely honest it's all true stuff um yeah there are there are nights when you feel like you might as well be a radio like and you're just like you we as entertainers especially with with all the great positive feedback and successes and things that we've done, like at the end of the day, sometimes it's like, why aren't these people paying attention? Why don't they care? Um, and then to, to draw onto that a little bit more in the second verse, I'm talking about, you know, that you see, they always have me back. They'll say, everybody loved you, Jack. Um, but they know what they ain't paying ought to be a crime. Um, because yeah, at the end of the day, a lot of our artists and musicians are severely undervalued. Um, mm -hmm. And that was one of those things when I pinned those lines, as soon as I did, I wasn't thinking of myself. I was thinking of all of my other singer-songwriter friends that are equally, if not betterly great, um, that are just, you know, undervalued when it comes to these kind of things. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it is a business and there's things to understand about it when it comes to like, how much alcohol are you selling or how many ticket sales do you have or, you know, all of that stuff. But, you know, if the people would just listen to some of these cats that are out there and just that aren't getting the ear that they quite deserve, like it would totally flip the game and, you know, appreciate the art because it's a beautiful thing. It's one of the few things that that we have any more that is a hundred percent man-made um everything else is either you know robots or something else so uh yeah. it, you know enjoy the just the the fool on the stool with the guitar or if he's brought his band to you and to do all that stuff you know because it's it's not an art that's gonna die but it's getting less and less as we can see one point I was going to make, or actually two points that I want to make is one, it got me thinking about that Alan Jackson song, To Do What I Do. Um, and th to me, I think that that's so true. And, and you touched on this too. Something that I've you know, been vocal about on the show is that artists are not valued correctly for what they do. There was a post that really stirred this for me, I think. Um, it had this idea of like, this artist comes into a venue Technically, he plays for three hours, but he, they pay him 500 bucks. Well, that didn't take in time for his equipment. 
you know, the maintenance on it. It didn't take in the time for him his, his setup, his teardown. Uh, it didn't take in the time for the insurance that he has to keep. And people don't the realize the fuel that. cost, the yeah. rehearsal time, the you know, there's so much that goes into it and and built on that more and more. But you know, not so within the song in itself, it's not all gloom and doom. Like the uh, the silver lining to it, with it being going places, is you know, at the end of the day, we still get to crank it loud and have a great time. Uh, we enjoy our job; we're passionate about it. Um, it's it's is a blessing that it, that is something that we do get to do. Um, and it's you know, at the end of the day, with music, I'm going places. No matter how you frame it, you know, not all of us will wind up on the the Grammys or you know the yeah, you know, whatever award or accolade that some people are seeking. Um, and yeah, you know, really a lot of it's just about enjoying the ride while you're going places, the people you meet, the hands you shake, the, th the things that go along with that. So that was very careful to, uh, include that bit of positivity in the, uh, in the song in itself, because like, it doesn't matter in the bridge, you know, it's, a uh, up on a stage or in the sage brushing off this lonely haze you know like it doesn't matter as long as i get to play music you know at the end of the day that is ultimately what it's about because that's what i love the most to do um but yeah then then the fine lines on the verses are but please appreciate us <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, just, just, just appreciate us hard. <laughs> and, yeah we we yeah. love what we do but you know at the same time for us we this is our livelihood this is what we do um for both you know fun and for business and and what we do to to, sur to survive because well that pickle jar it's probably not going to pay rent just on its own right you know uh, oh no not and, at all now the, the one other song i wanted to pick on because that album was actually really good and i realized you know fog and everything is kind of doing its own thing and i and i do want to let people know that make sure you go download that song by the way uh itunes spotify uh, YouTube music everywhere it's out all over and and we've been playing it here on mix but uh, one song that I gotta bring up and uh, this one this one hit a really big nerve for me and, and in a good way a really good nerve um, was the song called lullaby and I don't know I'm gonna tell you why this song meant uh, quite a bit last night and had me I had to re put it on repeat two or three times just so I could catch everything and the, the lyrics of how you took all these nursery rhymes and and strung them together to make this like cohesive thought was really beautiful but let me tell you why it meant so much to me and, and you can tell me if this is what you're going for um so i have a six-year-old now and when he was just a baby you know just born you know you're going through all these little nursery rhymes you sing to him and and you do all that and what it made me think about was then it, you know, when he finally went down to bed, when he finally went down, and you look at that like stack of bills, or you look at the struggles that you're going through with, you know, at the time I was with with my wife, um, you're just trying to survive, trying to get through that first year, but still remembering, honey, I love you. This is our lullaby, um, and that's what that song made me think about. And so, tell me, is that what you were going for? Did I catch the heart of that song? Or did you have something oh, else kind it. of in mind? Yeah, yeah. I uh, that that song's got got a really cool story for me on my end too, and that it it lines up really well with yours. Um, so I wrote that guitar part the day my son was born at a naval air station in Jacksonville at the hospital. We were sitting in the room, and I was picking on it, and I thought, well, that's kind of sounds like a that'd be a cool lullaby tune or something like that. And then it was the song that never got wrote. Well, about eight years later, I met the woman I now call my wife. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it wasn't two weeks after we started dating. And I got to thinking about the life that I wanted to live with her. I wasn't ready to tell her I wrote that song for her yet, even at the time. And, you know, was reflecting on the, the great relationships that had come before me and my family, but with my grandparents and stuff. And, uh, how much of a life I wanted to lead together and live that whole life as a lullaby and as all of these songs kind of just fell together um, like a giant puzzle and that hit it the nail on the head. And that, uh, that second verse, the, uh, when you're an old mother digging through your cupboard um, and, you know, 
how I'll be a little blue when you can't remember how to count to two is kind of a nod to uh, the dementia and Alzheimer's that my grandmother suffered through and as my grandfather helped her through her final days before he passed on before her and you know it's just like still what a remarkable life of like i think 70 years nearly of marriage that they had together and just you know had a huge wonderful loving family caring home and uh you know just it's it's written both in what I was currently living in and what I aspire to be and all within a love, you know, relationship, family, home setting, just like you're talking about. Right. I, and that's, that was the one thing I was going to mention too, is, you know, it, you can touch on these little notes in the song, these little nods and it might just be like a, a phrase in a song and, and how much it can mean to somebody. Uh, and and it was different than a lot of your other tunes, which are a bit more upbeat. This one's just more a little bit more laid back, a little bit more subdued, but it just had this really cool meaning to it. And uh, I think in the industry right now, a lot of what's making the big hits are these little bit more up tempo beats. And uh, um, to to see, I would I I wish that one could. Uh, is let me ask you this. I'm just going to back up for a second. Do you think that Lullaby might come out as a as a single that you guys might push that one a bit more or do you think uh that one's going to kind of just sit in its uh little um gem spot that it is already on the album? You know, I'm not against it. And uh, the way I approach my like radio promotion side of everything is so I'm as a hundred percent independent of an artist as I can be. You know, there's there are a lot of artists out there that will pay five to six thousand dollars to have somebody else call the radio station and push their single and you know maybe make the occasional relationship build on their own. But for the most part, like I, you know, I appreciate the work the radio promoters do and all that side, and I totally get it and I understand why artists would do that. Nothing against them. That's just not technically my style right now um so with that being said um with me doing everything myself i get to break the rules <laughs> so if you want to play it please play it uh that's the way i feel about it like the more uh the more people listen to whatever they want to listen to off of the album and uh hopefully somebody grabs grabs it and takes off and runs with it great I may do, uh, you know, now that you mention it, um, I'm, I may do a dedicated push to Lullaby when, uh, when we get the things out of the way that we're, that I'm working on right now, um, and just kind of follow it up in there somewhere in a, in a place that makes sense at a time that makes sense. Um, but I do have, uh, I do have somewhat of a plan as to how I want to approach the, the dedicated singles as they as it were as it comes along but even there's a station in australia that when i sent the album out through a distributor to all the radio stations like they wrote me like it was the runtime of the album from when that email went out he wrote me back and he said love the album we're going to start playing lullaby right now. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. So um, they love it in Australia. So hey, for them to be ahead of the game, you know? So yeah. if you, if you want to hop on it, do get after it. Um, yeah. I was going to say, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it, what's, what, what, what's the crowd going to love? What, what are the people? Because that's what, that's essentially you and I have the exact same goal in that regard. Uh, we want to do what's yeah. best for I mean, the it's listener. Your, it's, Yes, and it's your listeners. You're going to yeah. know your listeners much better than I will personally. Like You know who's listening to to what they like. So, you know, why wouldn't, well, when the, you know, the radio station in and of itself, the program directors have the choice to be like, oh, yeah, you should totally, let's play this one off the album because it's great. You yeah. know, and the, the fact that it seems like a lot of radio markets are sort of kind of, to lean that way a little bit to the more independent side too, that they can do that is refreshing. Yeah. So it's everybody's getting their own wheels under them now, which is great. 
and I'm I'm a hundred percent for that. And that that's been kind of the thing. You you talked about the radio promoters, and and we in radio do value them because they are sort of our eyes and ears on what the next thing coming that we want to look at. And the sad part is, in a lot of radio, um, especially your, if you want to get into the big markets, it's all about testing. They how did how oh, did yeah. this song test and where where did it rank? Did it was it a four? Was it did it get all the way to a five rating? And for those who don't know, the higher obviously just think of it as simple numbers. And there's actually different rating scales. Ones I'm thinking about, like the highest is five. Um, and like you know, basically if it's not at least a four, it doesn't air, basically. And then they just play the bejesus out of these like twenty, maybe forty songs. And, uh, and, and for us, we kind of have to do the same thing in a little bit, but at the same time, I always, if you listen to mixed country one six long enough, you'll see that, yes, you will get some of those power songs, these big top 20 songs, you know, that are out on the Texas charts right now, but you'll also get, uh, some of these unique gems. We have a Texas rotation, uh, uh, playlist right now. That's at least 1300 songs deep. So you're always going to get something neat. Wow. And that means even when a song drops off like our currents or our power category, say like a, the Jack Nelson song Fog, that song's going to end up in what we call our Texas Gen. So it's going to pop up about once every two weeks, minimum. And so you're always going to get some oh, of Jack. Oh, cool. Heck yeah. That's how we roll. That's how we do it because we don't want you to feel like you're always going to hear the same thing on mix. We want to throw in those little gems and, you know, we played like classic country too every once in a while. And, and that's been your true mix station. This is that's great. Exactly. Yes, it. You don't get that very I, often. I, I consider it more of a generational station because it's the same genre, essentially uh, a little different flavors because, you know, like I said, we'll play nineties, the, the popular nineties country. Uh, but then you could hear something from the early two thousands and a lot of, uh, Oh, like we played Aaron Lewis, for example, you know, um, and we and the cool thing about being Internet, Jack, and I think you, you might appreciate this is I don't have to be censored. I'm not an FCC station. So if, oh, if, nice. I, if I say uh, I'm not going to say it on this interview just because we're distributing it out. But, you know, if I want to say the S word on the radio portion of it or, or the F word, you know, in, in good taste. Right. Um, then I can no, of course. But, um, you know, we're actually, Jack, you, I told you this before this, and I'm just now sharing this here, but this is going to be the first podcast episode that we're releasing. So, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> and Jack's our number one guest. He said before the interview, I'm never number one at anything. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to wrap this thing through, but I got to get through with a bunch of the who, what, when, where, and why is all real quick here for you. Jack, if anyone is near Texas, where can they come and see you next? Ooh, uh, this Friday, I will be in College Station at a place called Herschel's, is what it's called. Herschel's. It's a, it's a whiskey bar, great listening room. I, uh, I get away with playing a lot more original heavy set there and, you know, get to tell the stories on the song. So I highly encourage anybody to come out and catch me there. Um, I know I'm supposed to be somewhere Saturday, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it's it just good. wake up in a different town. It's a lot good. of miles between here and there. <laughs> well, yeah, they, yeah, but well, yeah, this Friday. No, I was just going to say, what's your website? And we can go check out your concert calendar there. Yeah, uh, jacknelsonband.com. Uh, all of my socials are either like facebook.com slash jacknelsonband, Instagram at jacknelsonband, Twitter x at jacknelsonband. Um, and then uh, all of the music is streaming under Jack Nelson on Google, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, anywhere you stream music these days. So it's all in the good spots. But of course, most importantly, you can find it right here on Mix 106. Couldn't have done a liner better myself, man. Jack, uh, <laughs> thank you. Last question. I was like, I couldn't be talking about all these streaming services while I'm on a radio station. <laughs> it's all right. You know Listen what? To the radio people. On a, we 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 kind of embraced it because here's something cool, Jack. Uh, and we've been promoting this quite a bit because we just redid our entire website. Um, everything. Nice. It, it is fresh code. It it may look a little similar because we wanted to keep familiarity, but it is a brand new website. And uh, one of the cool things that you can do on it is any track, any Jack Nelson track we play, when it comes up, you can hit the little iTunes thing in the top right-hand corner near the album cover, and it will take you directly nice. to that track in iTunes. 
Sweet. Automatically. I love that. That's it great. Keeps, and even if you just missed the Jack Nelson song, it'll show up in our recently played and you can do the same thing. And also, everybody, remember this. This is something really important. Jack, you don't know this. Everyone, vote. Yes. Did you know when you make the text mix top 20, it's not just based on the charts. Your votes actually count. You can vote on our website. You can vote in the app. It's all based on each device. So each person can actually vote multiple times, once per device for a song. And uh, those uh, actually count as two spins. So uh, most charts you think, okay, well, what's radio playing the most? When you vote, it actually counts as two spins. So make sure you're actually going in there and uh, voting and uh, promote Jack. Let's get Jack to top 20. I want to see it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. That's cool. And that just touches right back on what I was saying earlier. Like, no one's going to know your audience better than you at the radio station. What a better way to grab the opinion. So if the listeners want to say in it, why not give them the opportunity to vote for it and make that say a thing? That's fantastic. What a great job. And it's just a station chart. We're not trying to be the official Texas country chart. We don't have any inspiration. We just... We we mainly started it because we wanted to. Hey, do... you know what? I will take credit for those station <laughs> charts all day long. Because a win is a win, no matter how you slice it. Well, then check it out because it's uh we, inches we, or miles. <laughs> we wanted to just be transparent about um, you know, what we're playing and why we choose the songs we play. So that's why we decided to make the chart and yeah, uh, brilliant. And uh, but anyway, so Jack. All right, last question officially before I get off on my tangent. There, I promise this is the last last question. If Jack Nelson disappeared from the earth tomorrow, what is the one thing that you would want the entire world to know about Jack Nelson? That I left the world having done everything that I could have ever expected to have done, but so much more. I could die tomorrow and be perfectly content and happy with everything that I've ever done. I live a great life. I've lived a great life. I couldn't have asked for a better life. I have the Lord and Jesus to thank for it. So follow that as well. And, uh, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor and enjoy the ride because you only get one trip around, around and uh, just enjoy it as much as you can. Try not to fret and stress over it all. Amen. Have fun. I couldn't have said that better myself. That is beautiful. Well said. Jack Nelson, right. everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for the Bar Talk Happy Hour. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, you go have fun on that ski trip. I hope your your boy gets to uh, have a great experience out there skiing out there. And uh, Jack, until next time, thank you so much.